Sometimes our hopes can be betrayed. Many of us campaigned for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi, imprisoned by the Myanmar military for fighting for democracy. Today, the Myanmar military government, which Aung San Suu Kyi nominally leads, stands accused of grave atrocities against the Rohingya people. We will recognize a Palestinian state as soon as we take office. <laughs> Labour's foreign policy will be driven by progressive values and international solidarity, led by our international team, Emily Thornbury, Kate Ossamore, and Nir Griffith. This means no more reckless wars of intervention like Iraq or Libya. It means putting... <laughs> it means putting negotiation before confrontation, diplomacy before tub-thumping threats. <laughs> and it means championing human rights and democracy everywhere, not just where it's commercially convenient. <laughs> and working, working to resolve the world's injustices, not standing idly by, or worse, fueling them in the first place. <laughs> Sometimes our hopes can be betrayed. Many of us campaigned for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi, imprisoned by the Myanmar military for fighting for democracy. Today, the Myanmar military government, which Aung San Suu Kyi nominally leads, stands accused of grave atrocities against the Rohingya people. Nearly one million have fled to neighboring Bangladesh, and women and girls in particular face appalling violence. We demand that the Myanmar government ends its horrific ethnic cleansing and allows the Rohingya people to return home and rebuild their communities and their lives in safety and security. Let me say a few words about the ongoing denial of justice and rights to the Palestinian people. Our party, our party is united in condemning the shooting of hundreds of unarmed demonstrators in Gaza by Israeli forces and the passing of Israel's discriminatory nation-state law. The continuing occupation, the expansion of illegal settlements, and the imprisonment of Palestinian children are an outrage. We support... We support a two-state solution to the conflict with a secure Israel and a viable and secure Palestinian state. But a quarter of a century on from the Oslo Accords, we are no closer to justice or peace, and the Palestinian tragedy continues while the outside world stands by. As my great Israeli friend, the late Uri Avnery, who sadly died a short while ago, put it to me, what is the alternative to peace? A catastrophe for both peoples. And in order to help make that two-state settlement a reality, we will recognize a Palestinian state as soon as we take office. We will also make a far more determined effort to help bring an end to the terrible war in Syria, a war that has led to millions of refugees. Some of whom I met in Jordan this summer, wonderful, brave people, desperate to go home, desperate to see peace, wondering how their families are getting on at home a short distance away, and whose plight 
Alf Dubbs described so powerfully yesterday. Alf, thank you for that, and thank you for all you do for refugees all the time. The Syrian conflict has been fueled by the military intervention of multiple powers, and it will need those same powers to deliver a negotiated peace settlement to end the killing and allow those wonderful refugees the right, which they want, to return home to their own country. But Labour's plans to rebuild and transform our country and its relationship with the rest of the world having to be made against the backdrop of huge uncertainty about Brexit. Labour respects the decision of the British people in the referendum, but no one, no one can respect the conduct of the British government since the vote took place. We all hope that the people's decision would be followed by effective and responsible negotiations that would protect living standards and jobs. Instead, the main negotiations that have been taking place are actually between different factions of the Tory party. And the only job the government is fighting to protect is that of the Prime Minister. Theresa May used to say that no deal is better than a bad deal. Yet now, after two years of botched negotiations, she's threatening the country with just that choice, a bad deal or no deal. That is a threat to our whole economy, especially our manufacturing industry, and to the tens of thousands of skilled jobs in the supply chains here in Britain. Now, time is running out. Companies are losing patience in the absence of any clarity from the government. They are planning to relocate jobs abroad and in taking investment with them. Some have already started, and I fear more will follow. The Tories are well aware of this, but some, some see Brexit as their opportunity to impose a free market shock doctrine on Britain. The Prime Minister is in New York today promising that a post-Brexit Britain will offer the lowest corporation taxes of all G20 nations. <laughs> Handouts for, to the few paid for by the many and an already tried and failed strategy for boosting investment. Sajid Javid has set out his plan for more tax giveaways and ripping up people's pensions rights. Liam Fox is itching to secure and scrap workers' rights and privatise the NHS with a side order of chlorinated chicken. <laughs> and then there's Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> no, Jacob has expressed his personal faith in Brexit Britain. It's personal and he's expressed it so nicely because he's decided to base his new investment fund in the Eurozone. <laughs> the Tory Brexiteers unite the politics of the 1950s with the economics of the 19th century, daydreaming about a Britannia that both rules the waves and waves the rules. Labour's job is now to win support for a deal that meets the needs of the country, combined with our plan to rebuild and transform with investment in our people and our economy. Our priority is clear. We aim to get the best Brexit deal for jobs and living standards to underpin our plans to upgrade our economy and invest in every community and every region. That will bring people together and meet concerns of both those who voted leave and those who voted remain. Conference, the way ahead is clear. We will vote against 
any reduction in rights, standards, protections, and oppose a deregulatory race to the bottom. Let me say to the country, Let me say to the country, as it stands, Labour will vote against the Chequers plan or whatever is left of it and oppose leaving the EU with no deal. And it is inconceivable, <laughs> inconceivable that we should crash out of Europe with no deal. It would be a national disaster. That is why if Parliament votes down a Tory deal or the government fails to reach any deal at all, we would press for a general election.